On behalf of the NEAC School of Education, we welcome you to our Sunday commencement ceremony, the University of Connecticut's 135th commencement exercises. Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the achievements of our students. We, as educators, are thrilled for you, our graduates, in reaching this point in your academic careers. Before we begin, there are a number of people that I would like to recognize. First and foremost, 
was going to say, would all the moms please stand, but everybody's standing, so. <laughs> would everybody sit for a moment, please? Thank you. Thank you. Now, would all the moms please stand? <laughs> On behalf of the entire NEAC School of Education, let me wish you all a very, very happy Mother's Day. Next, would all the friends, relatives, spouses, and partners of the graduates please stand? They're the people in the back. Please stand, all of you. We want to thank them for all the support they have given you over the years in helping you achieve this milestone today. Finally, would the faculty please stand? I am very proud of the accomplishments of our faculty. They are nationally and internationally recognized scholars in their respective fields and dedicated to working with our students to produce the best researchers, teachers, principals, superintendents, exercise scientists, physical therapists, and sport management personnel, not only for the state of Connecticut, but across this nation. So thank you all very, very much. We have before us close to 175 candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. They spent the past four years in our teacher education, sport management, or kinesiology, kinesiology programs. To begin, would everyone please stand for the singing of the national anthem by soloist Katie Cummins, a music education major from the NEAC School of Education and the School of Fine Arts. Katie, please come up to the stage. Wow, thank you very, very much. Great universities do not function without dedicated leadership and support from many individuals who believe in the importance of education. Let me introduce our platform party. Please stand as I read your name and we ask the audience to hold your applause 
until I've introduced everyone. Dr. Lou Ando, president of the NEAG School Alumni Society. Dr. Casey Cobb, professor and head of the Department of Educational Leadership. Dr. Del Siegley, professor and head of the Department of Educational Psychology. Dr. Larry Armstrong, professor and head of the Department of Kinesiology. Dr. Mary Ann Doyle, professor and head of the Department of Curriculum Instruction. Dr. Yu Hong Rong, assistant dean in the NEAG School of Education. Dr. Maraki Kerhan, associate dean, NEAG School of Education. Ms. Caitlin Rogue DeBellis, teacher and founder and executive director of Classes for Classes, our commencement speaker. Representing the University of Connecticut Administration, Dr. Amy Donahue, Vice President for Academic Operations. Justice Lopez, our student commencement speaker. Dr. Keith Barker, Professor, Computer Science and Engineering. Dr. Dorothy Anagnostopoulos, Director of the Teacher Education Program. And Dr. Jackie Van Hees, Associate Professor in the Department of Educational Psychology. Thank you all for joining us today. We began a new tradition this year by including student remarks. Our inaugural student speaker is Justice Lopez. Justice is a senior who is studying to be a secondary history teacher. He was, <laughs> he was selected by a committee to provide remarks at the ceremony. Please welcome Justice to the podium. Good morning. Actually, is this, can I? Yes. Should I stand on this? Yeah? Yeah, oh, I'm gonna stay right here like this. Yeah. No, no, I'm gonna go like this, all right, all right. That's cool, I'm just going with the flow. A big thank you is in order to all of the family members, friends, and mentors that are here today in support of this momentous occasion. To Judy Lopez and all the other mothers here today, what a better way to celebrate Mother's Day than the gift of seeing your son, daughter, or loved one graduate from college. Our years at UConn can be likened to the seasons of life, each year bringing about an area of new traditions and brand new beginnings as we transition from youth into young adults. From our first steps in the fall as freshmen walking with a map in one hand and a bag of free stuff in the other. <laughs> we were all sensing for some sense of direction, both in and outside of the classroom. We were welcomed home with brand new traditions that encompassed seeing our friends lip sync the tunes to our favorite songs in Gamble Pavilion. Those same exact seats, the ones in which we would cheer on our co-national championship Huskies. <laughs> to the difficult moments that we faced, and sometimes the not so great grades that we may have received, experiencing our first F and experiencing some of the cold moments of winter. Now, I know this speech is full of metaphors, but I mean literally, the freezing cold moments of walking in between classes in Stores, Connecticut during the winter. To then spring, as we received our acceptance letter into the prestigious school known as the NEAG School of Education. Each season bringing about an area of new growth and new beginnings. And as we gear up for the warmest season of summer, please let us keep some things in mind. The best years of our lives are not behind us. They are a part of us. And like seasons, they are set for repetitions as we grow. There are many things that we do not have control over in our lives. Much of our past has been shaped by the hands of individuals here in this room today, and I would like to give a round of applause and thank each and every one of them. The only thing you can control is effort and reaction. You control how much effort you put forth into something, and you control how you react to the things that happen to you in your life. Charles Swindle once stated that 10% in life is what happens to you, the other 90% is how you respond. Don't give up, Dad. Those statements will be tested no matter what stage of our life we are in. 
In fact, that exact statement was tested this spring as I embarked on a journey of becoming a student teacher. So a little bit about myself. I love to MC events like my sister, Jaylene Lopez. And since I was a little kid, I've enjoyed to create events and enhance experiences. Shout out to Subog for the great slogan. Now, I've had the opportunity to uh, MC uh, hundreds of events, right? Ranging from on cancer to different traditions like uh, lip sync and uh, some national dance competitions. Some audiences were great, mm, other audiences uh, not so great. But no event could have prepared me for my toughest audience yet, students in the classroom. <laughs> students have absolutely no problem calling you out, providing commentary, correcting you on your punctuation, letting you know if you said something wrong, and have no problem saying, well, that's not what so-and-so said. Despite the statements that all students will make, the true difference maker is how you react and how you make them feel. The student teaching experience was a beautiful struggle. I poured my all into that classroom and into those students, and I would truly miss seeing them each and every day. We have overcome much, and it is important to never lose perspective. And never let the difficulties of one season overshadow the joy of the rest. If you give up when it's winter, you'll miss the promise of your spring, the beauty of your summer, and the fulfillment of your fall. And today is a day full of joy and fulfillment. We will all go along and enter into separate paths throughout our lives and interact with individuals from a variety of backgrounds whether that may be through physical therapy, education, or the kinesiology fields. People enter into our lives for a reason, for a season, or for a lifetime. And I hope every interaction that you have with an individual is both meaningful and productive. Like my brother Jacob Lopez, be a person that enters into someone's life to help them understand the reasons for the seasons. And as we graduate to begin anew, I wish the same to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice. Thank you. Now I would like our Associate Dean, Dr. Meriki Kerhan, to come up to the podium. I'd like to add my, my best Mother's Day wishes to all the moms out there. Congratulations and enjoy this very proud day. In a few short minutes, you will transition from being students in the NEAG school to being alumni. We've invited Dr. Lou Ando, who earned his PhD from NEAG in 1979, to welcome you as new alumni. Dr. Ando retired after a long and successful career as a bureau chief with the Connecticut Department of Children and Families, and he is currently an independent mental health consultant and serves as the president of the NEAG School Alumni Society. Lou. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to be here this morning to congratulate this class of uh, 2014. And, now, and before I start, I really, I really have to um, explain to you an observation that I've made about myself, and, and I, it seems to be valid as well as reliable, because I've checked it out with a number of other people. And essentially it is that the longer a commencement speaker speaks, the less I remembered. And this seems to be true for a lot of other people. So I'm going to be very brief. Um, <laughs> My, my message this morning for you, and it's, and it's one that I hope that you'll remember, um, is, to, is about the NEAG Alumni Society. With your graduation today, you've joined a fairly elite group. You're not just a graduate of a prominent university or a, a top 20 uh, public uh, university in the country. You're, you've joined the Yukon family. Husky today and Husky forever is not just a, a phrase. It describes your role as a member of a family with thousands of members all over the world. One of the best ways to make use of that membership in that elite group is through membership in the Yukon Alumni Association. And, and you should know that membership in the association automatically makes you a member of the NEAG School of Education Alumni Society. For the past 17 years, the society's been working with the Alumni Association to offer programs to keep alumni connected 
to the university and to support its present students. Whether you're just beginning your career or you're going on to higher education, your membership in the society will keep you connected to the university through uh, its provision of information and activities. It'll keep you updated on what's happening at your alma mater, and it provides a means for you to stay in touch with other alumni and, and friends that you've made during your time here. So please consider joining. That's my message. Uh, before I leave, th there's one additional thing that I'd like to do, and, and that's to ask you to help me thank uh, a number of people who've contributed so much to the university, to the School of Education, and the Alumni Society. First, a special thanks to uh, Dean Tom DeFranco. Tom. Tom. Tom's contribution was recognized at the Honors Award ceremony several weeks ago, but I don't, I don't think enough can be said about his efforts on the part of the school and the society. So surely we thank you. Next, I'd like to thank and recognize Associate Dean Meriki Kirhan. She served in her, in her um, associate dean position since uh, 2009, and she's been a major supporter and helped the board through strategic planning processes. Uh, she's always been there with uh, support and wise counsel at those times that um, uh, we floundered. And so, Meriki, thank you so much. And finally, last but not least, our gratitude to Assistant Dean Yu Hung Rong. Yu Hung has been uh, associate dean since 2006. I don't know where you are. Ah, there you are. Thank you. All during that time, he's worked with and supported the society. He's come to a number of our meetings, uh, and not to mention that um, uh, when he was a, a new doctorate student, uh, he was one of the founding members of the society. And so thank you so much for your, for your efforts throughout the years. Thank you all once again. Congratulations. And please consider joining. And welcome to the family. Thank you, Lou. Our Alumni Society does an incredible job supporting the NEAG School of Education and its alumni by raising money for scholarships, mentoring undergraduates, and sponsoring important events within the NEAG School. And most importantly, the members of the society represent our great school out in the field and make us all look good, so thank you. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Keith Barker to the podium for the presentation of University Teaching Awards. Dr. Barker. This year, a number of NEAG faculty have been recognized for their outstanding teaching or scholarship in education. I'd like first call to call Jackie Van Heest to join me at the podium. Jackie Van Heest is a Yukon Teaching Fellow who this year is recognized by her students as an outstanding educator with the First Year Experience Program. According to those that she teaches, she's one of those inspiring role models that live every day to improve the lives of others. They highlight her level of, of determination and dedication and concern that she has for all her students. She cheers those that are down. She plans effective activities for learning and finds time to let her students talk about their issues. Her scholarship has been recognized by her other awards, but this one, nominated from the students themselves, focuses on the one major thing that our undergraduates expect, a dedication to achieve their success and growth. And in that, she wins hands down. We congratulate you, Jackie, and admire you on your latest achievement. Thank you. I'd like now to introduce Mary Truxaw. Mary's teaching responsibilities include courses at both undergraduate and graduate levels and focuses predominantly on teacher education with an emphasis on mathematics education. In her teaching philosophy, she states that she is committed to inst instruction that challenges students 
whilst being sensitive to different learning needs and styles, as well as to cultural and linguistic diversity. Her department head com comments that Mary's accomplishments reflect her sincere commitment to excellence in teaching and research. She is a superb university instructor who consistently receives outstanding ratings from her students, one of whom writes, having her as a professor was truly an enjoyable experience. Her obvious passion and excitement for teaching made learning that much more exciting. Dr. Truxo maintains a current research-based perspective of math education and instruction, and her research findings appear in highly respectable journals. She is a scholar of natural, na national importance in mathematics education and is held in high esteem by her peers. So it's my pleasure and honor to present Mary Truxor with the 2014-2015 University of Connecticut Teaching Fellow Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Incidentally, the NIAG School of Education now has 11 teaching fellows, and that's one third of the whole of the university's teaching fellows. I now call Dr. Scott Brown. Who's this there? <laughs> the Board of Trustees Distinguished Professor is the highest honor of the university that can, they can bestow on faculty who have demonstrated excellence in teaching, research, and service. This is the 15th year of these awards, and it's an honor to recognize Dr. Scott Brown, Professor of Educational Psychology and co-director of the Global Ed 2 project, which has provided web-based STEM simulations to more than 3,000 middle school students. He is recognized as an expert in learning and co cognitive processing, specifically in the area of problem-based learning. His work in this area has addressed issues in Lyme disease education, scientific literacy in deaf and hearing impaired students, and promoting STEM education in students through international ed negotiations on the web through the Global, Global Ed 2 project. His research has resulted in more than 120 scientific papers, book chapters, abstracts, and proceedings, in addition to two books, a monograph, and more than 250 conference presentations and addresses to professional groups. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the National Science Foundation, and the US Department of Education have funded his work to more than $12 million and this is during his career at UConn. Dr. Brown's previous awards include the 2008 Outstanding Research Award for, from the NIAG School of Education, the 2006 UConn Public Service and Engagement Program Award for the Global Ed Program, and the 2006 Thomas F. Dolan Award for Distinguished Mentoring from the Northeastern Educational Research Association. A former head of the Educational Psychology Department, he has also served as director of the Teachers for a New Era project and director of the Bureau of Education Research and Service. He's also a fellow of the American Association Research Association and the Association for Psychological Science. We thank you for your contribution, Scott, and dedication to your work and the recognition that it brings to the NIAG School of Education and to the University of Connecticut. Congratulations. <laughs> I now invite Dean DeFranco back to the podium. Thank you very much, Keith, and congratulations to all the faculty award winners. The morning of December 14th, 2012, began like most in the quiet, bucolic town of Newtown, Connecticut. A cold but bright sunny day with people rushing into the local cafes for morning coffee and then off to work for school. As was the case each morning during the school year on that day, 
students walked into schools across Newtown. At one of those schools, Sandy Hook Elementary School, Principal Hochsprung, as well as teachers and staff, greeted parents and children with a smile as they walked through the school doors, a scene reminiscent of what goes on at that school throughout the year. It seemed like a normal day at Sandy Hook Elementary School. It wasn't. At 9.35 that morning, a gunman entered the school in a few short minutes, 20 children, six adults, lay dead in the classroom in the hallways of Sandy Hook Elementary School. Remembrance of those 20 children and six adults who lost their lives on that tragic day, let us take a moment of silence. Thank you. Over the next few days, the world mourned this horrific tragedy, and it seemed on that morning, we as a nation lost our innocence. As we viewed the photos of those beautiful and innocent children and adults of Sandy Hook Elementary School who lost their lives that day, it was reminiscent of other tragedies I have witnessed during my lifetime. The assassination of JFK, Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, the Space Shuttle Challenger, 9-11, and Columbine. Events that shook our nation to its core and caused people around the world to take a collective gasp and for a moment stop breathing. Events that seemed to make time stand still like a Polaroid burned into our consciousness that will last a lifetime. In the days following the tragedy, we were introduced to individuals whose courage and bravery saved the lives of children. One such individual was Caitlin Rogue DeBellis. Caitlin Rogue graduated from the NEAC school with a master's degree in curriculum instruction and certification to teach elementary school. After serving a long-term substitute teacher at a couple of schools in Connecticut, Caitlin received her first full-time teaching position at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2008. She said, as long as I can remember, I want to teach. It was a dream come true. Five and a half years later, she could not be prepared for what was to come the morning of December 14th, 2012. That morning began like every other morning at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Caitlin welcomed her 15 first graders into a room, a room situated just inside the school's main entrance. As students came into a room, she greeted each child with a smile and a warm welcome, something she did every day. As was customary each morning at around 9.25, she put a recording of the song, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, from the Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical, Oklahoma, a cue for the children to gather in a circle on the rug in order to go over the day's activities. Within minutes, chaos ensued. Caitlin could hear the loud rattle of bullets, screaming, and the shattering of glass in the hallway right outside her classroom. Mark Twain once said, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. In that moment, Caitlin defied fear and acted. She, not, she did not think about herself, but about her children. Immediately, she raced to turn off the lights in a classroom and shut the front door. Then in a clear and calm voice, ordered all 15 children into a tiny bathroom, a three by four foot room at the other end of the classroom. She managed to barricade the bathroom door and lock it from the inside. Over the next 45 minutes in this tiny room, she managed to keep 15 children safe and sheltered from the horrific events taking place just outside her classroom door. In the end, all her children were safe. Since that day, Caitlin has married and has taken away uh, time from the classroom to reflect on the events of that day. As a result, she was inspired to start a nonprofit organization called Classes for Classes. This idea came about from the outpouring of support and gifts from people around the world to the families of Newtown. As noted by Caitlin, 
The kids were so happy with the gifts, I wanted to teach them that you have to give back. Classes for Classes is a movement where students in one K, one K through eight class give a gift that fulfills a need or an educational objective to another K through eight class and then have that class pay it forward to another class. Caitlin believes that out of the tragedy, we can teach young children about love, kindness, compassion, and empathy through her movement. No one could ever be prepared for what was to take place that morning. No one could ever imagine being put in that situation, nor know how one would act. Gerard Way stated, heroes are ordinary people who make themselves extraordinary. On the morning of December 14, 2012, Caitlin Rogue, an ordinary person and a teacher, acted in an extraordinary way. In that moment, she became a hero. It is my great privilege to introduce to you our commencement speaker, Caitlin Rogue DeBellis. Thank you all very much. Good morning, esteemed graduates, friends and family, NEAG faculty, honored guests, and a very happy Mother's Day to all of the moms with us today, including my own. I have recently had the distinct pleasure of speaking to high school and college students across the United States. In doing so, I have noticed a common theme. I have seen their passion excitement and enthusiasm for their futures in their eyes. It got me thinking, what would I say to my former student self? Or more importantly, what would I have wanted someone to say to me? I choose to put this in letter form as some of the greatest messages ever delivered were relayed this way. From Martin Luther King Jr. to Bill Gates to Helen Keller. And now their words live on, imprinted on the paper for us to go back to, reflect on, be inspired by. So here is what I would say to anyone about to embark on their own life's path. Dear college graduate, Congratulations. You are at a pivotal point in your lives where the choices and decisions you make will set the course for the rest of your lives moving forward. The choice is yours alone to make. You hold the power. You are truly the captain of your own life's ship. You must define your purpose and you must choose your perspective on how to view the world around you. Is the glass half full or half empty? Is the grass greener on the other side of the fence or under your own two feet? Do you curse the rain or praise it for bringing you beautiful flowers? The choice is yours alone to make. I would encourage you to always focus on the positive. I say this to you because I have had to choose to focus on the positive. I have had to choose to focus on the abundant good that is all around. This letter will be broken into four parts, four key messages that I have found crucial in my life. Choosing your, I'm sorry, choosing your purpose, choosing your perspective, choosing to overcome, and choosing hope. Life is all about choice. So what would I have said to my former student self? Now, nine years later, here is what I would have said. In sharing it, I share my story. My story as a teacher, as a learner, as a leader, my story as a survivor. I share it with you because I know it will make a difference in how you view each minute, each moment, and each day when you are aware that life can change in an instant. I share it with you because in life we each have a very definite purpose. Mine has always been to be an educator. Choosing your purpose. My story today is one of an educator. That is who I have always been at my core before high school, before college. I knew that my passion and my enthusiasm laid with helping children, ensuring their success. This knowledge guided me in every choice and decision that I made. 
What is a teacher? What has it always meant to me? Everyone is a teacher in their own way. Whether you are teaching a child to read, teaching an athlete how to stretch properly after suffering an injury, teaching a child how to score a goal for the very first time. We are all truly teachers. Here is who I always wish to be. <clears throat> As I share it with you, I want you to dig deep. I want you to think about your passions, your desires, your goals. Who is it that you wish to become? Here is who I always wished to be, my purpose. Teacher, noun, definition, a person who teaches. This always resonated with me. Being a teacher means giving of yourself to your students. It means making someone else's life better. As a teacher, you know that it is the first of your jobs in a long list of titles. You are your student's support, you are their educator, their nurse, their mediator, at times even their parent. More importantly, you are happy to wear each of these hats and to fulfill these roles. You give your students the stability that some of them may not have at home, and you welcome these roles. As a teacher, you become the difference maker in your students' lives. You intervene when two of your students aren't seeing eye to eye. You enable a student struggling with self-image to find something to feel good and confident about. You build a caring community in your classroom where everyone feels safe and welcome and a part of the team. You are the difference makers. The gift of being a teacher is, of course, twofold. Well, you give many gifts to your students, they give back tenfold. When a student walks in and hands you a card, a fresh batch of picked daisies, or a Teacher of the Year award, it is you as their teacher who receive those gifts. Likewise, when a student finally does something for the very first time, learns to spell that tricky spelling word, or finally reads that chapter book, it is you as their teacher who receive those gifts. It reminds me of one of my favorite sayings, the gift is truly in the giving. I was recently asked, what would the world be like without teachers? Without hesitation, I replied, it wouldn't work. Teachers are the common denominator in our world. Everyone starts in school. You, me, athletes, actresses, doctors, lawyers, the President of the United States started in school, and it was teachers who enabled their dreams to come true. Teachers are why the world works. This was always my dream. My childhood dream did come true, and my story may be quite similar to yours. I was born on October 31st, 1983. Although being that I am adopted, I did not meet my parents until nearly two months later on December 23rd, or Kate's Day, as they aptly named it. My parents awoke to find that my dad's mother, who lived with them at the time, had passed away in her sleep. A completely tragic morning. And yet, it was the morning they were becoming parents, a day they had waited for for so long. It was a very bittersweet day. They went to pick me up. I was their savior, and they were most certainly mine. Choosing your perspective. I choose to begin my story here because the day I went home with my parents is a true example of the balance found in life. There is good and bad. There are highs and lows. Both are always present. They coexist. On any one day, in any one moment, you always have both. Of course, at times, life is weighted more heavily to one end, but both are always present. Your perspective chooses which to focus on. I have always considered being adopted as one of my greatest gifts. We know in life that the greatest gifts are not objects, things, or possessions. Someone somewhere knew that I would have a better life and selflessly gave me up so that I may have it. That was always the way I viewed being adopted as the most positive thing. Life is all about perspective, and perspective is amazingly powerful. Outlook determines how you react or not to every situation in your life. You have the choice. You alone hold the power. 
You can choose to see the best in everything, to focus on the positive. Having this perspective will make the hard times, the bumps in the road, the hiccups, feel that much more approachable. It will make the impossible feel possible. I am grateful that I learned this lesson on perspective at a very early age, for it truly shaped my outlook. I grew up acting out my adult life, the desire that we have at five and six years of age to become adults, to be just like mom and dad. For some, it's a toy kitchen and playing mom. For others, it's a toy race car and playing race car driver. For myself, that acting out meant rows and rows of stuffed animals or neighborhood friends, if I was truly lucky, sitting around me, letting me teach them all different things. This ultimately came to define the path that I would ultimately choose. Persistence is key in meeting any goal. If you always keep your goal at the forefront, keep moving forward, you will always end up farther than from where you began. Always persevere. My persistence paid off. I graduated with my Master's of Education from the NEAG School, excited to start out on my career. I had always dreamed of being a teacher. My first year teaching at the age of 22 was everything I could have imagined and more. The end of August arrived and Miss Roy Room 12 was proudly displayed on the plaque next to my door. I cannot tell you what an amazing feeling that was. 18 first graders filed into our classroom. I don't know who was more excited, them or me. We spent our first day learning the routines of our classroom. We learned each other's names. We shared about our summers. We had lunch in the cafeteria for the very first time. It was official. We were a class. I spent the next seven years of my teaching career gaining multiple experiences. We know as teachers that continual personal growth is key to our success, which included starting a running club for third and fourth grade students. I began my seventh year teaching, my sixth year teaching at Sandy Hook, happier than I had ever been. I had just gotten engaged over the summer, and life and its possibilities seemed truly endless. I was enjoying trying new things in my teaching, implementing new strategies. The year was passing, filled with so much anticipation and excitement. When you are engaged to marry the love of your life, it is a daily countdown. 329, 242, 180. On December 14th, that countdown came to a screeching halt. The fragility of life was bought, brought to the forefront. Life changed in mere seconds. Choosing to overcome. That morning I awoke ready to tackle the day. It was Friday, and the weekend lay in front of me. As I hurried to leave, something stopped me in my tracks. I paused, and I looked out the slider at the sunrise over the water. I dropped my gym bag, my lunch, my keys. I grabbed my phone, and I walked over to the slider, and I snapped a picture of that gorgeous sight, filled with a sense of calm and happiness, and even more excited to start my day. I rushed out the door. Not even three hours later, my sense of calm, peace, and happiness were forever changed. As my students and I sat in morning meeting, greeting one another as we do every day, loud, rapid fire shots began over and over and over. As my classroom is the first in the school, I knew immediately that what I was hearing was a weapon shattering large glass panes, bringing terror pain, sadness, and immeasurable loss to a school full of light and love. What you must know is that the possibility that your life can change in an instant is always there. Sometimes fortuitously so, and others not. Leaving your home moments before it burns to the ground, changing lanes before a head-on collision, a miraculous healing after suffering a long illness. But of course, the change can also be for the worse. Your car being sideswiped on a highway, a loved one unexpectedly drowning, an angry man entering a school whose only intention is to take innocent lives. On either side, what you must know 
is there are two things to take away. The first is you must live your life every single day in a way that if it were your last moment, you would feel as well as possible about the choices and the decisions you had made. Second, you are the one who holds the power of how to react to those unexpected situations. You can choose to react with anger, hate, and resentment, or you can choose to react with love, compassion, and empathy. It is your choice alone, and it will define your life moving forward. I knew that something very evil and very bad was in imminent proximity to myself and my students, and time was of the essence. How do you make a split-second decision in the second that you need to? For myself, the only decision that had to be made was, do I want my students and I to survive? The only answer to that was yes. I got up, I shut the door, I turned off the lights, my keys were across the classroom, and I knew there weren't the seconds to get them. The door remained unlocked. I turned to my students and said, we need to get into the bathroom right now. They protested for a minute, how, why, what do you mean, Ms. Roig? They were in protest because what I was asking them to do must have sounded impossible. We got in and we waited. It's strange when life presents difficult, hard times, often there is an element of waiting. I'm sure that you can relate to this. You are in an accident and you wait for your prognosis. You are diagnosed with cancer and you wait for remission. A loved one dies and you wait for your emotional pain to somehow be lifted. In waiting, there are many unanswered questions. It is the supreme unknown. Will it all turn out all right? Will it be okay? In waiting, you do have control over some things. I realized in those moments, I can choose my thoughts and I can choose to have faith. In those moments, the impact of my thoughts was huge. I had to think positive, uplifting, hopeful thoughts. Hope that we would make it through. Hope that someone was looking out for us. No one can take your hope or your faith from you. They were mine alone. As I stood surrounded by my precious students, my mind, my heart went to what was at my core. I thought of my fiance. I thought of my wedding dress that I had just bought. I thought of the beach that we were getting married on. And in those moments, I realized I cannot leave him. What do you do in a time where you have no control, where you are scared, where you are shaking, where you feel lost and alone? What is there to do? We had to make a choice. We had to choose hope. And so I said to my students, anyone who believes in the power of prayer needs to pray and anyone who believes in something else needs to imagine the very best. And so that's what we did. Soon after, we did not hear shooting. A very eerie quiet took over. My students asked, can we get out now, Miss Roig? I told them we're going to wait until the good guys come. We stayed and we waited. I'm told it was about 45 minutes. Eventually a knock came and I whispered to my student to ask who it was. I did not want a madman to know there were 16 terrified people huddled behind that door. My student asked, and the police officer responded, it's the police, we're here to help, please open the door. At that point, I spoke and asked for their badge. Holding their badge, I still did not believe. I asked them to get the keys and to unlock our door, which they did. We were greeted by a SWAT team I will never know who was more surprised by the sight they saw, us or them. At this point, we were quite hot, but able to say, thank you. Our journey did not end on the other side of that bathroom door. I will always hold on to that moment. After experiencing this tragedy, immeasurable in its scope, I am left searching for answers. There is no answer that will ever be given. After living my life prior with such profound meaning, I was now left searching for it. 
when I ask why, I hear silence in return. Sometimes in life, we focus so long on the questions that we can't answer that we forget there are a lot of questions that we can. And so for myself, I knew there were two questions I had to answer. The first was how do I get control back for myself and for my students? And second, how do I make sure this day does not come to define us? Choosing hope. When I thought of my students, I knew we had to make a choice for ourselves, for our healing. I had to find a way to give us our control back. How we found our answer, our own resiliency, was in the love and support that we received from around the world. Boxes of things came into our school. After giving and giving to my students, I stepped back and realized that I needed to teach them that in life when you get, you have to give. And in life when somebody does something nice for you, you have to do something nice for someone else. And that was exactly what we were going to do. And so we reached out. We asked a class, how can we help you? What do you need? We sent them a smart board to help in their studies, and they were very thankful, as is seen here in this picture. While scoring high on a test and doing well in academic areas are both crucially important, so is knowing how to treat other people, understanding how to empathize with the needs of others and have compassion for your fellow man. It may seem so obvious to us as adults, but imagine some of the simplest lessons that we ever learned. One plus one equals two. The letter A comes before B. Also very simple. But imagine where we each would be if we had not learned those simplest of lessons. In my life, I have had to reflect back. I have had to dig deep within. So what does the future bring? As I look ahead, I am filled with many feelings, the greatest of which is hope. Hope is a powerful thing. Hope is the reason we get out of bed every morning. It is the reason we are all here today. Hope is the reason we embark on any task, job, or mission. We take on a home improvement project because we hope it will make our home more beautiful. We decide to volunteer each week because we hope we can be the difference. We decide to go to college because we hope that we can be the change. Hope is the driving force. As anyone, things happen to us in our lives that impact us, influence us, change us. It is not, however, the moment that defines us, but in how we choose to react to the moment that defines us. As is in one of my, f oh, we got married on August 16th. As is in, <laughs> forgot that was in there. As is, as is in one of my favorite books of mice and men, the best laid plans can often falter. I could have never planned for the events of December 14th, 2012. As someone who prior had always been a planner, I now found myself on a very new path with no plan. You too will meet times in your life that weren't in your plan. You will have times where your path goes off course. After enduring the worst tragedy anyone could ever imagine, I had to choose a path for my own healing. Over the course of the past 17 months, I have met with, been honored by, some truly incredible people and organizations, and I want to share a few of them with you now for a very important reason. President Barack Obama, Dr. Jill Biden, also an educator, Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, Ariana Huffington, the Dedicated Teacher of the Year Award, the New York Jets, Cindy Leave of Glamour Magazine, the New York Giants, Lady Gaga, everyone loves her, President Clinton, the mothers of the children in my class, Yahoo News, Greenwich Magazine, Lori Owl, Women of Worth, Katie Couric, Anderson Cooper, Senator John McCain, 
Diane Sawyer, and many audiences just like you. I share this with you because I am an ordinary person. I am a teacher, I am a wife, I am a runner. I am just like you. For nine years ago, I sat exactly where you are, except it was in Gamble. <laughs> I was excited, terrified, thrilled to start out on my own life's journey. I am someone who, after experiencing the worst tragedy imaginable, had to make a conscious choice that it wasn't going to define me. I had to choose a path for my own healing. I had to choose to focus on the abundant good that is also always around. I had to choose to focus on the positive ways in which I could teach children to care about one another. No matter what you go through in your lives, you have the same choice. We each have many gifts to give. We each must set our own course. We must become the model for others to follow. We must become the difference makers and make an impact in other people's lives because, in fact, we are all connected. We each have the ability to accomplish great things together. Always think positive, even during the tough times, especially during the tough times. Go after what you want and believe to be important. Work hard at it. If you have not found already, life is truly a journey. It is not a destination. Enjoy and appreciate your ride. Relish the peaks and hold on to hope in the valleys. It will not always be easy, but it sure will be worth it. As Gandhi so wisely said, you must be the change you wish to see in our world. Trust me when I say that you can make all the difference. What better day is there than today to start? From the bottom of my heart, I say to you, your purpose. Choose a positive perspective. Always overcome your hard times and choose hope in them so that you can be the change you wish to see in our world. Your lives commence right now. Sincerely yours. Thank you. Wow, thank you very, very much. Thank you for those inspiring words. Candidates for degrees will now be presented. Would the marshals please take their places? And at this time, I would like to invite our Associate Dean, Dr. Meriki Kerhan, to come up to the podium to read their names. We will begin with the graduates from the Department of Kinesiology. Jason Lublin. 
Stephen Lewis. Stephen Dennis. Connor Pescatello. Michael Butkus. Alexander Bryce. Alexander Sterner. Anthony Viola. Stephen Pazinski. Sam Telliard. Dylan Anderson. Lucas Mogensen. Kelly Nicole Zender Fuller. Chelsea Fenton. Walker Morrison. John Sebastian Gaylor. Peter Adentori. Maria Vromans. Leanne Jagan. Kwaku Dumphy. Alyssa Varanowski. Margaret Elizabeth Reese. John Rettenmeyer. Joshua Straten. Benjamin Buchanan. Alex Bernard. Zachary Smith. Ryan Kalkowski. Matthew Grezik. Jeffrey P.W. DeLucia. I don't know what the P.W. stands for. Cameron McDonald. Jeffrey Higgins. Timothy Mike. Gabriel Holsom. Victoria Drool. Jesse Fong. Matthew Nowak. Jeremy Eith. David Edelman. Brian Curick. Neil Ehlers. Luke Belval. Danielle Scanlon. Sarah Goldstein. Yeah. 
Kyra Busk. Elizabeth Hevern. Andrea Crocco. Next, we will call the graduates of the Sport Management Program. Oh, I'm sorry, it continues. This is still kinesiology. <laughs> Jennifer Gobin. Okay. Taylor Edinger. Sebastian Gerard. David Pierre Charles. Ashley Peterkin. Christina Tedford. Kelsey Hahn. Brianne Scully. Christopher Jablonski. Now we will call, I'm guessing here, now we will call the graduates of the IBM program, the Integrated Bachelor Master's Teacher Preparation Program. The first group are graduates of the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. Patrick Mulcahy. <laughs> Rebecca Duchesneau. Abigail Esposito. Andrew Didden. Brian Colantonio. Sarah Nelson. Miranda Rich. Andrew Dombrowski. David Sierra. Oh, sorry, Daniel Sierra. So busy looking at the spelling of his last name, I forgot the first one. Daniel Wilson. John Bankston. Shawnee Hurling. Emily Mayen. Camille Thomas. Kelly Nelson. <laughs> Olivia Petrowitz. <laughs> Abigail Keen. <laughs> Margo Liga. 
Jennifer Artruse. Justice Lopez. Julia Picas Picasha. Julia Picasha. Marissa Pavlik. Douglas Sikorsky. Alexander Valacer. Colin Schlank. Keith Surrett. Joseph Oblon. Bradley Allen. Samantha DeSantis. Alejandra Munoz. Jessica DeShane. Melanie Glasser. Brittany Lopriori. Jillian Lemma. Heather Zisk. Allison Kusha. Kimberly Sakamoto. Brandy Stengline. Samantha Maine. Kelly Carney. Gianna Ferreira. Caitlin Munier. Anne Treglia. Gabriel Orlando Castro. Kevin Cauley. James Went. Megan Maybe. Victoria as Banner. Alexandra Caterino. Danielle Taylor. Caitlin Samino. Sarah Seibart. Kimberly Burke. Jennifer Sue. Catherine Fernberg. Jeffrey Sperano.
Jessica Glynn. Timothy Watt. Jill Thompson. Caitlin Gallagher. Sarah Riley. Rachel Marino. Kelly, Kylie Rose Juicy. Gabrielle Pilato. Amy Pandolfi. Scott Dempsey. Amanda McLaughlin. Christina Zuccaro. Chelsea Gigerick. Casey Cunningham. Sarah Robertson. Sarah Fort. Kayla Gopen. Deanna Wombolt. Kara Wojcik. Jillian Linares. Linares. <laughs> Emily DeFord. Laura Knox. Gabriella D'Ambrosio. Morgan Tarleton. Glenn Ullman. Alexandria McGowan. Jillian Senchikoska. Mitchell Bernier. Justin Patton. Grace Rimkunis. Jennifer Shames. Alexandra Mian. Colin Walters. Leo Castle. Niall Reynolds. Matthew Rosero. Great. Now the graduates of the special education program.
Elizabeth Mary DeVito. Kelly Michelle Stokowski. Stephanie Bromander. Jeffrey Thomas Moore. Kaylee Marie Kruger. Jennifer Del Sol. Kaya Melissa Devona. Diana Policha. Juliana Spinelli. Alisa Bogdanovitz. Allison West. Kylie Brazel. Kylan Bonner. Laura Slade Kent. Sophia Leung. Lydia Ezerins. Alexandria Pires. Congratulations to all the graduates. Congratulations. With great pride, I'd like to recognize an impressive number of our students who are graduating with academic distinction. These students have performed at the highest level and represent the best tradition of academic excellence. I now ask our students with the following designations to please stand. First, Babbage Scholars. Would the Babbage Scholars please stand? Babbage Scholar Awards are present. <laughs> ba Babbage Scholars are Awards are presented to students who have earned a 4.0 grade point average based on at least 12 credits each semester for both the spring and fall of 2013. Congratulations. Next, New England Scholars. Would the New England Scholars please stand? <laughs> New England Scholar Awards are presented to students who have earned a 3.7 grade point average or higher based on at least 12 credits each semester for both the spring and fall. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, University Scholars. Will they please stand? University scholars. <laughs> Graduation as a university scholar is one of the highest academic honors the university bestows on undergraduate students. No more than 30 university scholars are selected each year. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, 
Finally, Yukon Honors Scholars. Will the Yukon Honors Scholars please stand? Yukon <laughs> Honors Scholars must maintain a minimum GPA of 3.4 and completed an honors thesis and a minimum of 12 credits in honors courses. The honors program is highly selective, representing only 10% of the University of Connecticut's undergraduate population. Congratulations. <laughs> to all of you, thank you very, very much for your accomplishments and your dedication to your studies. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, will all the graduates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the University of Connecticut and in accordance with the procedures and regulations of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with which you have been presented at the 135th commencement of the university. I charge you now to assume fully the responsibilities of your new status to enlarge upon the foundations of your knowledge which you have acquired to take upon yourselves the obligations of an enlarged vision and to seek to do your fair share of the work of this world. You are now NEAG School of Education graduates and alumni. Congratulations. What a wonderful day, way to start the day. In closing, there are a few things I would like to emphasize. We have many to thank for this day, our families, especially all the moms who are here today, the graduates for making us proud, our talented faculty, dedicated professional staff, and the support from the offices of the president and the provost. We also have the citizens of this great state of Connecticut to thank for the support of this university. I would also like to extend my thanks to our two speakers for their thoughts and their insightful words today. Graduates, we are very proud of you and what you have accomplished, and please remember to thank those who have helped you along your journey. On behalf of the entire NEAG School of Education family, congratulations. And now I'm gonna invite Dr. Meriki Carahan to the podium. Thank you, Tom. I wish to extend thanks to everyone involved in making our commencement ceremony today a memorable one. Our faculty were serving as marshals, with a special thanks to lead marshal Dr. Jackie Van Heest, the Community School of the Arts ceremonial brass quintet from the School of Fine Arts, soloist, thank you, soloist Katie Cummings, The sign language interpreters from the State of Connecticut's Commission on the Deaf and Hearing Impaired. All the members of the NEAG School Commencement Committee who have worked diligently to make the many arrangements for this day special. We also extend our gratitude to Gary Yaxtis and his fine staff here at the Jorgensen for their guidance and their help on today's ceremony. Before our ceremony concludes, I'd like to invite Dr. Marianne Doyle, Department Head of the Department of Curriculum and Instruction, to the podium. Thank you, Mira Key. Good, good morning, everyone. As our academic year closes, the NEAG School of Education faculty and staff wish to express our best wishes to not only you, our graduates, but also to our Dean, Thomas DeFranco. Soon, Dean DeFranco will be commencing a new phase of his career. He is stepping away from the responsibilities of the Dean's position to return to our faculty. He has been our Dean for five years and has served the faculty and you, our students, with sincere commitment and integrity and confidence in our abilities to develop and sustain programs of highest quality. He has created new opportunities for us and he has supported many diverse endeavors. 
He has maintained financial stability for our school in times of economic challenges. And he has found ways to expand program offerings and to recruit new faculty members who are nationally recognized, highly talented professionals. And these developments benefit all of us. Often you've heard how our school enjoys high standards among all schools of education nationally and regionally. Our high ranking re results not only from the efforts of our professors and from the excellent work of you, our students, but also it results from wise leadership that sets important goals, nurtures development, monitors progress, and helps us address challenges with positive energy. Such an approach has always engendered successful problem solving. This describes Dean DeFranco, a leader of commitment and advocacy. I know that you realize a faithful friend is a sturdy treasure shelter. One who, find one, one who finds one finds a treasure. Dean DeFranco has been a faithful friend to all of us in our NEAG School of Education, and we are grateful for his friendship. To express the very best wishes of the NEAG faculty and staff, as well as to you, our graduates, I share these words from a poem written by Maya Angelou and entitled, Continue. Our wish for you is that you continue. Continue to be who you are. Continue to astonish a mean world with acts of kindness. Continue to allow humor to lighten the burden of your tender heart. Continue to offer the mantle of your protection to the young and defenseless, to your peers and to your friends. Continue to ignore no vision which comes to enlarge your range and increase your spirit. Continue to dare to love deeply and risk everything for the good thing. Continue, and by doing so, you and our work will continue eternally. Friends, please join me in thanking Dean DeFranco. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you very much. Um, it's just been an honor and privilege to serve as dean over the last few years. Um, and it is just the support that I've received from the faculty, the staff, the students, um, and the administration has just been overwhelming. So I want to thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our ceremony now concludes with the recessional of our faculty and the graduates who will march directly back to the Gentry Building. We ask that the audience please remain seated until the recessional has completed. Following the recessional, we invite everyone back to the Gentry Building for a celebration and refreshments. Thank you and have a wonderful day.